find the flux of the vector field 0, 0, negative 1 across the slanted face of the tetrahedron z is equal to 4 minus x minus y in the first octant. And we have that normal vectors point in the positive z direction. So looking at what's given here, we're integrating across the slanted face of our tetrahedron, which is defined explicitly. So we start by recalling that the vector surface integral of an explicit description of our surface is computed as follows. So we have the surface integral, or we're integrating the double integral over our surface S of the vector field dotted with a normal vector. We integrate with respect to our surface, and we convert this to the double integral over our region R of the vector field F, G, H. So these are the components, and this is dotted with the components of our normal vector minus the partial derivative of Z with respect to X minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, 1 dA for area. So this is the surface integral that we're going to use to find the flux. So the first thing that we want to do is sketch this region. So we're going to sketch the surface. S in three dimensions. And again, we have our explicitly defined surface here, our tetrahedron, which is Z is equal to four minus X minus Y. So to start with our sketch, let's go ahead and we'll find our intercepts. So the X, Y, and Z intercepts. So for our Z intercept, we're gonna let X and Y be zero. So I have z is equal to 4 minus, x, minus 0 minus 0, giving us a z-intercept at 4. And we'll do the same thing for the x and y-intercepts. So we have 0 is equal to 4 minus x minus 0, giving us an x-intercept again at 4. And very similarly for our y-intercept, we have 0 is equal to 4 minus 0 minus y, and then solving for y, we see we have a y-intercept also at 4. So we'll use these intercepts to help us sketch this region. And we also want to keep in mind here that we are restricted to the first octant. So x, y, and z are all positive. We can say here is, we'll say there's 4 on the z-axis, here's 4 on x, and here's 4 on y. And by connecting these three ordered pairs, we can see that slanted face of our tetrahedron, z minus, or z is equal to 4 minus x minus y, and then being bounded in the first octant, we see we have this triangular prism. This is our surface S, and what we really need here are the bounds of our region in terms of X and Y. So we want to think about this solid's projection into the XY plane. So of course we know in the XY plane, Z is equal to zero. And we sketch ourselves this two-dimensional region here. In the first quadrant, there's x and y. So we have our triangular region, and we already know that the bounds on x are from 0 to 4. But we want to know what is this diagonal line that's bounding this region here. So again, keeping in mind that z is equal to 0, if we take our tetrahedron equation, 0, and let z be 0, we have 0 is equal to 4 minus x minus y, and solving for y, we see that the diagonal is defined by the linear equation 4 minus x. So we can see here from this two-dimensional sketch here, the bounds on x, x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4, 
and the bounds on y, y is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4 minus x. So these are the bounds of our two-dimensional region that we'll use in integration. So now that we found the bounds on our, let's think about what's given and what we need to find. So we have our explicit description of the surface. Tetrahedron Z is equal to 4 minus X minus Y. So defining this explicitly as a vector valued function in terms of X and Y. Then we have this vector X, Y, Z. But we're going to replace our Z with 4 minus X minus Y. And this, of course, is such that our region R is the set of all ordered pairs with x greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4, y greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4, minus x. So we'll also use this explicit description to find the normal vector. Starting with the fact that we have z is defined as 4 minus x minus y. We have the partial derivative of z with respect to x is minus 1. And the partial derivative of z with respect to y is also negative 1. So therefore, the components of our normal vector defined as minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, 1. And plugging these values in, we have the vector minus a minus 1, minus minus 1, positive 1, which leaves us with a simplified vector of 1, 1, 1. So that's our normal vector. And this also confirms to us with our positive components that the normal vectors are pointing in the positive z direction. And so now we're ready to go ahead and compute or find the integrand. So we want to compute the dot product of our vector field with the normal vector. So we have a vector f dotted with the normal vector. And our vector field was given to us as 0, 0, negative 1. And we're dotting this with the vector 1, 1, 1. And applying the dot product, we see we have 0 plus 0 minus 1. And so our integrand is negative 1. So we're now ready to go ahead and we'll set up the surface integral and evaluate. So we have the surface integral of that dot product of the vector field with normal vector over s. And so we're now integrating over that region r. So the outer integral of the x bounds 0 to 4. The inner integral are the y bounds from 0 to 4 minus x. We just found the dot product of the vector field and the normal vector is negative 1. And we have the order of integration dy dx. And so evaluating our inner integral here, we have minus y. We'll evaluate from 0 to 4 minus x. And so evaluating, we have minus 4 minus x minus 0. And distributing that negative, we are left with the outer integral from 0 to 4 of negative 4 plus x dx. And so this integrates to a negative 4 plus x squared divided by 2 from 0 to 4. So plugging in 4, we have negative 16 plus 16 divided by 2 gives us 8. And then again, we're subtracting 0. And so this leaves us with a 
beautiful final answer of negative 8.